Jim Bloggs is a retiree. He lives a quiet, measured life in the countryside with his wife, Hilda. They have a small house, remote from the neighbors. Their son lives in town and already has children of his own. Jim visited the library, where he learned some unhappy news. A new war was not far. The Soviet Union might attack Europe and the United States. Jim picked up a couple of booklets telling him how to prepare his home for a nuclear bombing. At home, he shared his fears with Hilda. However, his wife didn't take all of that seriously. She thought there would be no war, and that only nerds were interested in all that boring politics. Hilda was sure that if they had survived World War II, they would survive this one too, in case of its sudden beginning. But her positive attitude did not reassure Jim. He remained frowning and slightly worried. As the couple was having lunch, the radio announced that the situation had escalated sharply, and the war might break out in three days. Jim was frightened, but quickly pulled himself together. Blimey! Three days! Language, James! Language! He and Hilda had nothing to fear, for they had booklets with instructions for building a shelter. Hilda thought that her husband was going to dig a hole, as their neighbors had done, but Jim only laughed at her, because the booklets from the library described more modern and reliable ways to hide from a nuclear attack. The government suggested using doors lined with sofa cushions. They were sure to protect from the nuclear explosion. The next day, Jim begins to take the doors off their hinges. He builds a hut-like structure against the wall. Jim is sure it will make a good blast and radiation shelter. In reality, such shelters are only meant to keep out shards. While Jim tries to secure his home, Hilda is unconcerned. She worries about chores at home, such as cooking, laundry, or cleaning. Despite this, she has enough time to simply admire the beauty of the surrounding nature. With the doors against the wall, Jim wonders if he has chosen the right angle. The brochure says to install them at a 60-degree angle. Jim decides to call his son and ask him how to measure the right angle. His son, Ron, recommends using a transporter. Jim advises him to build a shelter as well. However, Ron laughs back at his father's advice. He is sure that this war will not touch them, and even if it does, they will all die anyway, with or without a shelter. Jim doesn't understand his son, for he, as well as Hilda, grew up in turbulent times. Back then, almost every house had a shelter, and now the couple remembers those times with nostalgia. When they were children, all this was seen from another perspective. After finishing the construction, Jim goes out to get supplies. The brochure advises him to stock up on food and water for two weeks. But the store has been emptied by the locals, and Jim gets the scraps. He stuffs them into his board hut. Then Jim paints over the windows with white paint to provide extra protection against radiation and to keep flammable materials from the heat of the explosion. White reflects heat and radiation, at least that's what the booklet says. When everything is ready, Jim invites Hilda to try out their shelter. It seems to be cramped for two, but it's still suitable for them. Although Hilda finds many draws in such a shelter, Jim can logically explain all the blunders made in the authorities' recommendations. While Jim was building his shelter, Soviet missiles were being prepared to be dropped on Britain, planes were being lifted into the sky, and submarines were being sent on combat missions. At Jim's and Hilda's final preparations are underway. They have to stock up on water for the next two weeks. They pick up all the loose bottles and cans in the house and make them up in the hallway. When the spouses talk about the war again, Jim begins to fantasize. He imagines that hordes of Russians will invade their land, with explosions and gunfire rumbling from everywhere. Hilda generally likes the Russians, but she would not want one of them in their house. Jim blocks the windows with dressers, gathers the last of the little things in the shelter. <laughs> You do look silly. And sits down to drink tea. Just then the radio announces that the fatal has happened. Britain has been hit by a missile attack. In the next three minutes, enemy bombs are to fall on the territory of the state. Jim grabs Hilda and drags her to shelter, while his wife worries only that her cake will burn in the oven because she forgot to turn it off. Get in, get in, get in! The cake will be burned! Nuclear bombs explode, neighborhoods are lit up in a terribly bright light, buildings collapse, and every living thing is killed. The Bloggs house is also damaged, but it withstands, and the shelter protects the Bloggs from shards of glass and other debris. When it was over, the couple looked around the room and realized they had some serious cleaning to do. Hilda even wanted to get out of hiding and soak the blast-ravaged curtains before washing them, but Jim wouldn't let her. They shouldn't be out of here for another two weeks. It is evening, and Jim and Hilda go to bed. Hilda notices a box of sand and thinks it is a makeshift toilet her husband has built. But Jim explains that the sand is for washing dishes. Hilda, on the other hand, thinks such precautions are unnecessary. She has no intention of changing her way of life because of some nuclear explosion. From the survival brochure, Jim learns how to behave in an isolated room, so that time will not go so long. 
People should play cards or other games, or tell each other stories. Hilda begins to knit, and Jim tells her what systems the government has for responding to nuclear bomb threats. Jim and Hilda are confident that the people in power have thought of everything, and soon the country will return to its former life. After a couple of days, Hilda gets sick, and Jim plans to make her a cup of tea. For this, he gets out of hiding and realizes that there is no water running from the faucet, and the bottles they had stocked were hit by the blast wave, spilling almost all the water. However, what they have is enough for a cup of tea. Except that the stove doesn't work, and neither does the TV or the radio. Even the phone is disconnected, so there's no way to call anyone. Hello? Hello? No, it's not even ringing. Hilda starts cleaning. In between, she talks to her husband. They hope that their son has had his house insured for such an event, otherwise he will be in trouble after the bombing. Jim has paid the insurance, so they won't have to spend their own savings to rebuild the house. With each passing day, the couple gets worse. They are suffering from weakness, vomiting, and headaches. They believe it is all due to the explosion and the nervousness associated with it. Jim and Hilda wait for the military to come to them one day and bring them food and clean water. Suddenly Jim remembers that they are forbidden to get out of the shelter, because there must be radiation around. However, the couple sees nothing of the sort, which means it is quite safe to leave the house. They go out into the yard, and the view that is around frightens them. All the greenery, all the trees and bushes have burnt out. Instead of the blooming plain, there are ashes. But what worries the couple most is that the milkman has not yet arrived. Jim explains to his wife that milk deliveries will be delayed for a while because of the bombing, but that the milkman will definitely show up in the next few days. Outside, they smell baked meat. Jim surmises that because of the emergency, people didn't wait until the weekend to cook the roast. He has no idea that everyone in the neighborhood has been burned into their homes. Jim enjoys spending time outdoors. He takes folding chairs out into the yard. The only thing that keeps them from enjoying the post-apocalyptic scenery is the sudden onset of rain. Jim is glad of the rain, because they are out of water. He fills a free container with rainwater, which he thinks is the cleanest. Hilda, however, still decides to boil the water before using it. Over dinner, Jim again begins to fantasize about what he might become if he were accepted into the armed forces. He would drive an ambulance or rescue pretty girls from burning buildings. But Hilda brings her spouse back down to earth. Finally, the rainwater runs out as well. Jim and Hilda look much worse than they did after the bombing. They are completely weakened, gaunt, and have difficulty moving around the house. Jim is thirsty, and Hilda is as well, but all they have left is one last candy bar. The spouse is divided in half. As time passes, Hilda's gums begin to bleed and her hair falls out. But Jim calms her down. He shows her sores on his hands, just like his wife has, and tells her it's all temporary. The military is about to show up and bring in special medications to make them healthy again. But the soldiers don't come. Hilda is afraid another bomb will explode during the night. She invites her husband to spend the night in the shelter, and to be on the safe side, they put on paper sacks of potatoes, as the government brochures advises. Here they begin to pray, but after a while Hilda stops her husband. She says there is no need to pray anymore for they have gone to heaven. 